Right, for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Miller, could you please call the roll? Chairman DeMaria? Here. Vice Chairman Albright? Here. Mr. Bushnell? Here. Mrs. Kiefer? Here. Mrs. Purdy? Here. Mrs. Sebesky? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Dr. McGorick, do we have any additions and deletions? We do. To the consent agenda, personnel ratification of personnel appointments, resignations, transfers, and recommended terminations. To the discussion agenda, uh, under finance, the revised draft, five-year CIP, these would be the revisions from the work session on Saturday. Thank you. And we don't have any spotlights tonight? Yes, we do. <coughs> we do. We have spotlights. <laughs> Mrs. Radford. Good evening. Chairman DeMaria, other members of the board, we actually have about eight spotlights for tonight. <laughs> the Virginia School Board Association, or VSBA, has recognized the members of the School Board of the City of Manassas with VSBA Academy Awards. The VSBA Academy serves as a professional development program for school board members and recognizes them for participating in VSBA meetings, conferences, board development and training, and for their active involvement in the association. Board members can earn award credits based on participation from July 1st to June 30th of each year. Awards are issued for five different levels, recognition, achievement, excellence, honor, and distinction. Awards tonight are as follows, and Ms. Lee Miller will be assisting with that. Ms. Ellen Purdy, Award of Achievement. Thank Mr. You. Art Bushnell and Mr. Sanford Williams, Award of Excellence. Mr. Tim DeMaria, Award of Honor. The Award of uh, Distinction, which is the highest level a member can receive, is being given to Mr. Scott Albrecht, uh, Ms. Pamela Sebesky, and Dr. Catherine McGuirk. Each will receive the coveted starfish pen, which is given out to a very small group of board members across the state. I would just like to say on behalf of Manassas City Schools, we appreciate your time, your dedication, your commitment to the students and the staff of our school system. And congratulations and thank you for everything that you're doing. You're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they were just kind of pseudo spotlights. No kids. We're not nearly as much fun as the kids are. Committee reports. Mr. Williams, anything for academics? Yes, we met last week and we discussed two major items. One was a new course at Osborne High School, which will be discussed here tonight, and the other was a K through 12 counseling plan, which we received uh, information about and will be presented here tonight as well, I believe. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Sebesky, anything for policy? Um, yes, sir. The policy, yes, sir. The policy committee met, and um, we will be discussing the actions of that committee further later on in the meeting. Thank you, uh, Mr. Albrecht. Anything for educational support? No, sir. We'll talk about the CIP later and open it as a general item. Thank you, Mr. Bushnell. Finance. Sure, we'll talk about the CIP later as a general item, sir. Personnel, Mr. Bushnell. Nothing, sir. Thank you. I'm telling you what, some people got their hair done up here, and they look really good, and I don't mean Mr. Williams. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you get it done every day, don't you? Yeah. yeah. He always looks really good. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. You keep that up here, and I'll aim our domes right at you. Okay. Uh, board member comments. Uh, Ms. Maddox. Um, I would just like to welcome in a new season uh, as sports at Osborne. We had our award ceremony, la uh, award ceremony last night for fall sports, and it went really well. And so let's welcome in the winter season and hope to have a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Torres. <laughs> no, I don't have any comments. Okay, I think no. so. <laughs> Mrs. Purdy. Yes, I do have a couple of quick comments. Um, so last week was November 11th, and that was Veterans Day. 
And um, coming from a long line of, of veterans, I was sort of reminded on Friday um, just what those veterans do for us. So I ask everybody, keep all of those families in your prayers, because that's a, that's a really, really tragic event that occurred. And it's the people who stand watch for us who wear uniform, whether it's police, firemen, policemen, and the members of the military. That's why we haven't had that happen on our shores in a long, long time. So. Uh, thank you for keeping them in your prayers. And oh, by the way, congratulations to our latest elected member of the school board, Ms. Kiefer. Speaking of Ms. Kiefer, Ms. Kiefer, who was uh, sworn in today for her winning her election in November, early November. Thank you. You. And, and thank you, Manassas, for allowing me to continue to serve you. Um, first, I wanted to just also congratulate my fellow board members for their service and all of the development they do with the VSBA. I now know that I'm striving myself to reach that starfish pin level, so I will work hard to do so. Um, secondly, uh, speaking of the VSBA, uh, many of us will be traveling down this week uh, to their annual convention where we'll hear about legislative priorities, we'll learn from other school districts, and we look forward to carrying it back um, to the city and to continue to work on what we're working on. At the convention, our very own Mr. Art Bushnell will be recognized. I believe they call it the VSBA Quarter Century Award <laughs> for 25 years of service. God love you, sir, and congratulations for your service, and thank you for your service. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the Manassas City Public Schools uh, Education Foundation. They put on quite an event at METS this year because we outgrew Mayfield for our Stand Strong for Education. Um, it was huge. There were many community members, businesses, families. Um, it was just a great event. So I thank them for everything that they've put into it and to all who participated. Um, I too want to echo Mrs. Purdy, um, you know, thank you for the veterans and in the course of all of the crazy ongoings in the world today um, and with the Thanksgiving coming up, um, I just sort of had a moment of reflection um, and really not only wanted to thank, to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, but in moments of these challenges we face in the world, I just wanted to make sure that we're all sitting back and thanking um, being thankful for the little blessings in our life, whether they're little, big, whatever, is just to take a moment, especially in the season of Thanksgiving. Um, and I am thankful for you allowing me to be of service to this community, and I hope I can continue to do so. Um, just to close, I was thinking about it and saw a little bit of a quote in terms of what I think about and thank you know, God for, and it's a Ralph Waldo Emerson, Emerson kind of uh, attitude of gratitude words. For each new morning with its light, for rest and shelter of the night, for health and food, for love and friends, for everything that goodness sends. So with that, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you. Mrs. Spesky. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, too, would like to thank all of our uh, servicemen and women both past and present that allow us to have all the freedoms that we have in this country like I have right now freedom of speech so thank thank you very much especially in light of the things going on in the world I think that um, we have much to be thankful for as we head into our Thanksgiving and um, holiday season starting I'm very grateful and thankful for the things that I I have in my life and I'm sure many people are as well I'd like to also thank the Education Foundation for the wonderful Stand Strong event that was at METS. It was um, extremely well attended, uh, lots of participation from our business community, um, and lots of great things going on with our students. It was just a w really, really wonderful evening. So thank you all to everyone that participated in all the many different ways. And thank you to the Education Foundation for all the hard work involved in, in putting that very large event on. And um, last but certainly not least, as already has been stated, uh, we most of us will be traveling down to Williamsburg for the annual Virginia School Board Association um, State Convention. It's where we go and get a lot of professional development and have the opportunity to network with other school board members across the state, which is a very important function that you do as an elected person. And this year, we're very honored that our own um, Mr. Art Bushnell will be honored with the Quarter Century Award. Not many people um, 
serve for a solid 25 years as he has. Um, I have to say honestly, Art, it's not what I, I think I'm going to be aspiring to. But um, I really appreciate your many, many years of service and dedication to this community. Um, I believe you've been the longest standing school board member in the city of Manassas. And um, it's your many hours of work are greatly appreciated and your mentorship um, over the years that I've been on the board has been very much appreciated. So thank you, sir, for your service. Thank you. Mr. Williams. Thank you. First, I'd like to congratulate Ms. Kiefer. Welcome back. Um, also, congratulate Mr. Bushnell. With, uh, I can't imagine 25 years, you know. <laughs> but something else, something else. So God bless you. Uh, and I appreciate your service, seriously and truly. Um, there were comments mentioned earlier about the Stan Strong Education event, which was awesome. Uh, every year gets bigger and better, so thanks to the Education Foundation and lots of members of the community who came out to support us, which is really fascinating and um, really cool. So next year, if you haven't made it out there, please uh, come out and support. Um, last Tuesday, well this past Tuesday, was National Young Readers Day. And I had the pleasure of reading Ms. DeCoco's class at Hayden Elementary. Um, those kids were fabulous. They were funny, engaging, asking some interesting questions. They had two comments they wanted me to bring to the school board. One, they said when they get to Mayfield next year, they want a bigger playground. <laughs> and the second comment was some of them had siblings in Osborne and they want laptops. So I, I told them I would share those, those comments with the board and we'll see where it goes. But uh, um, thanks to Mr. Coco, um, Ms. Han, who organized and other teachers who were involved. I don't know all the teachers who were involved. And around the city, there were other schools who did it as well. So to all of you who did that, thank you very much because it's not only great for the kids to get read to, but it's cool for me to be able to sit down and engage with them and talk to them and read to them. So it was a lot of fun. So thank you all for inviting us to, to do that. Um, and finally, for Thanksgiving, um, I want to echo some of the things here said about veterans. I mean, I have some veterans in my family. I talked to my uncle who was in Vietnam and people talk about it and we say you know we give we thank you for your service but it's kind of lip service but if you know any veterans really truly thank them because they really put their lives on the line and um, whether it's a phone call or a card or whatever um, and in the spirit of Thanksgiving please let them know that you appreciate all they do because they do a lot of special work for us and finally um, in the spirit of Thanksgiving um, it occurred to me a lot of times we Life goes by so fast, especially here you know, in Northern Virginia. We don't take time to cherish the moments we have. Um, you never know when special moments are going to arise, and many times you don't realize it until after they're gone. So for Thanksgiving, please take time to kind of chill out, relax as much as you can, um, and just cherish those times, because who knows when they'll be back again. So thank you for your time, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bushnell? I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about uh, serving uh, so long on this school board and how much it has meant to me. Uh, when I first uh, was appointed to the school board, uh, before elected school boards, uh, I was appointed when there was a large controversy in Manassas about how some of its citizens thought that children should be educated and other citizens thought they shouldn't be educated that way. Um, I stepped into the breach thinking that this was something that I would do short term. Uh, I learned from Marvin Gillum and from Joe Johnson. Uh, Joe Johnson, until last year, was the longest serving board member in the history of the city. And when I was first appointed, I never thought that I would, that anyone should serve as long as Joe Johnson did. And here I am. I passed uh, his mark, and I've I am in my 26th year now. Uh, my anniversary was in July. Um, and it's not... <laughs> Run! All right, you can come back now. It's over. <laughs> Sir. And it's, it's not that I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, you know, I've stood for re-election uh, several times, and I've been fortunate enough to... Uh, always be able to continue serving. Uh, I do it for the same reason that every other board member up here serves. I've done it longer, but every one of us serves because we value the children of the city of Manassas. We put their interests and their education above all else. Uh, it is the most important mission that any of us have, and, and that is something that we as a board uh, are united on. Uh, we may defer about what the best way is to do that, but this board, more than any other I've served on, has one single, united, top priority, 
and that top priority is to do the best we can for education and for the children of the city of Manassas. And it's been my honor to serve the children in the city for these 25 plus years. And when I, when I saw in the program that they called it the quarter century mark, I thought 25 years didn't sound like so much, but a quarter century <laughs> sounds like a little bit more than I'd wanted to serve. So thank you for indulging me, sir. Thank you. Mr. Albright. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and certainly, as others have, congratulate the bookends, I guess, on the board. Mrs. Kiefer for her new election, and my friend, my, my colleague, Art, for 25, now in his 26th year. It's both, as Mr. Bushnell just said, serving to better our community. Uh, and following that, also a thank you to everyone who ran in the November elections. Uh, for every single office because it gets to what Mrs. Purdy alluded to, which is our form of governance, which, while maybe not perfect, is far better than anything else out there. So we have a new state senator, I think, as everybody knows. Of course, our, de our delegate was reelected. So we have a little bit of change going on in the city, and I think that'll be interesting for us as we go forward. Um, and as Mrs. Purdy alluded to, certainly I think all of our thoughts are with the citizens of Paris, of France, and really the world as we continue to deal with international terrorism and thank the military, the homeland people who continue to protect us on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, sir. Um, speaking of veterans, I'd like to thank our veteran. Uh, I think he's the only one we have, and we appreciate your service very much. Um, a couple of things that other people have already touched on, stand strong for education. The Education Foundation did a fabulous job. Look for it next year. It, it, it really was above and beyond. And if you didn't make it out there, make it out next year. It was uh, very good. Um, the parade is coming up. All the Christmas stuff is coming up. It's a great time to be in our city. So make sure you get out to the parade and for the tree lighting and, and such. We have uh, Ed Asner coming out, and Ed Asner has spunk. Good word. No. Nobody's got... Anybody? I hate spunk. spunk. <laughs> no, come on. Um, and I didn't mean to make a joke about bald people, um, but Jenny, um, you're my hero. Thank you very much for everything you do for our kids and you've done for yourself. You are an inspiration to all of us. Thank you for being here. Um, and at 7.30 is tip-off, so let's roll so that the vice chairman can get home to his Kentucky game <laughs> before he starts crying out here. <coughs> no, no, I'll be doing the jig because Kentucky's going to beat Duke. <coughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I got no, you know. No, nothing? Okay. No ra horse in the race. Uh, citizens' comments. I have no one signed up, uh, and we have our... Um, the first one, we'll just do a general citizen's comment. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Hold on, I gotta read this then, because I know how you ramble on. <clears throat> At this time, we welcome citizens who wish to speak about the city of Manassas public schools. This is the budget. Uh, we appreciate the time you have taken <coughs> to be here. We treat citizens' comments as public hearing, and we do not engage in conversation with speakers. The lack of an immediate response to your comments should not be taken as a lack of interest and concern, everyone is limited to three minutes. This is Hickenbottom. And with that hair or not, I'm still starting a timer. <laughs> uh, good evening, Dr. McGorick and Chairman Demaria, members of the board. Um, this week is American Education Week, and tomorrow is a special day for ESPs. A lot of people don't know what ESPs are. They're education support professionals. We in Manassas have a lot of support professionals. We have everyone from bus drivers, custodians, food service workers, paraprofessionals in the classroom, office staff, central office staff, human resources. You know, these are the people that make our schools go. The teachers are there for the students. The paraprofessionals are there for the students. Everyone here, including yourselves, are here for the students. We do what we do because we love our students and we love our ESPs so if you see an ESP tomorrow please tell them happy ESP day you know you cannot spell respect without ESP these people are important and it's good to recognize them thank you thank you she took less than a minute 
Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Okay. Um, now we're going to open it up for the uh, school budget, uh, the CIP um, public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak on that? Calm down, everybody, one at a time. Okay, we will move on. We're getting closer, buddy. I like that. <laughs> Uh, the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I move to the uh, school board of the city of Manassas adopt the consent agenda as modified, I believe. With second. second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mr. Bushnell, that the school board of the city of Manassas uh, <coughs> adopt the consent agenda as modified. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry 7-0. Move on to the discussion agenda. Student achievement and accountability, K-12 school counseling student services plan. Dr. Stone. I've got a three minute timer. Good evening, Chairman DeMaria, Dr. McGork, members of the board. Uh, we are delighted to be here this evening to present the School Counseling Student Services Plan. If I can keep that straight. <laughs> um, the plan was provided to you in your board documents um, and is a very detailed plan about our direct and indirect services that students will receive um, this school year. It's broken down by each grade band and services are provided by quarter. Tonight's presentation is an overview of this plan and kind of the process we use to get there. So a little bit of a background. Um, the school counseling plan was presented to the school board in June and it was really a philosophy of school counseling along with some very detailed information about how school counselors work. The feedback from that meeting is really what we were interested in looking at is what our students receive in terms of services from our counselors. So in September and October, we began a data collection process, which included surveys to our staff, students, and parents. That data was collected by K-12 Insight, and Dr. Martinez is here this evening to present the overview of those results. In October and November, we worked with all the K-12 school counselors and our administrators to begin to craft that school um, counseling student services plan. And on November 10th, we presented that to the School Board Academic Committee. On November 14th, you did hear that presentation again as a full school board in your work session. And tonight, we are here to present again. So at this time, I would like to welcome Dr. Martinez to this podium, and she will be sharing the overview of the data results. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you, Dr. McGuark, uh, members of the school board committee, and members of the community um, for coming out tonight. Um, it is our pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, before we jump into some of the results, I just wanted to give a quick overview of who K-12 Insight is. Uh, we've been working with a number of school districts across the country since 2004, 400 school districts across 22,000 school buildings, working with 30,000 school administrators. We've established um, partnerships at both the local and state and national levels. Some of our partners are listed here. And we uh, use custom solutions that involve t uh, technology, research, and expert training to support uh, school communities throughout the country. Let's see. Wonderful. So um, as Dr. Stone mentioned, my name is Alicia Martinez. I serve as one of the senior directors of research at K-12 Insight. I s began my career as a teacher, third grade teacher in at the Atlanta Public Schools. I've been in the field of education for just over, uh, almost approaching 13 years. I also worked in Fairfax County Public Schools as a program evaluator, and some of my areas of expertise are listed here. I received my doctorate in um, education from George Mason University. And before I jump in, I just wanted to recognize my colleague, Tori Schulte, 
right behind. Um, she serves as a strategic account executive, and um, I'm really pleased to have her with me this evening. So in terms of this study, uh, we know that school counselors are vital members of any educational community. I think we all remember our interactions that we've had with school counselors. Um, and I think this study really exemplifies some of the things that um, Mr. Bushnell was talking about, the goals of what the school committee, school board committee is all about in terms of really keeping the focus on students. This study really exemplified that. Uh, we partnered with the school uh, district to ask students, parents, and staff members for feedback on the overall counseling program. There were three separate surveys that were administered, uh, and they were guided by the superintendent's goals, as well as the American School Counselor Association standards, instrumentation that had already been developed by school counselors, as well as materials that were provided by the division staff. We know that these results will be one part of what will help inform the revised school counseling program. The surveys address these four major topic areas. So the overall quality of the school counseling program, the familiarity that um, participants have with school counselors, how accessible the school counselors are, and their professional disposition. So what were some of those interactions like between parents, students, and staff as they relate um, to school counselors? And then the overall perception of support services. We know that they're in three major strands, um, which we'll discuss later. In terms of the details of the study, uh, K-12 Insight emailed invit individual invitations uh, to parents that we had email invitations for. We also made the survey available on the district's uh, division's website, so anyone that may have come across it that was a parent or staff member could have accessed the survey that way, and students were able to use their student IDs to participate at their school site. The survey was open from September to October uh, 15th, and we launched a lot of pre-survey communications, which is a real testament to your uh, school division. Um, this was a method to increase participation, so I really applaud you in all of the uh, methods that were used to really increase participation. In terms of understanding results, we've presented them at a very high level in terms of the overall results, and in some cases they're disaggregated by grade level and participant type. We do not do random sampling. This uh, K-12 Insight does census surveys, so the results should not be generalized to the participants, but rather they're reflective of the opinions of survey participants who took the time to answer the questions. We have um, excluded participants who did not answer, um, uh, pr answer items in the survey. And in the charts and graphs, you'll notice that some of the stack bars don't have a number tied to them. That's just because they're less than 5%. Any questions so far, school board members? Okay. So in terms of participation, there were nearly 6,000 participants. Uh, you can see the distribution listed here. The majority comprised of students in those respective grade levels. There were just over 600 parents and guardians, nearly 300 staff members. We did want to show the distribution of parent and guardian participation by race and ethnicity. And you can see that 49% um, of the parents uh, identified as white, followed by one in four of Hispanic and Latino descent. In terms of the overall quality of the counseling program, this sl uh, slide indicates that students perceive the overall quality of the program most favorably compared to counterparts being parents and staff. When you're looking at the stack bar graph here, I apologize that the clicker is there, but um, anyone that's looking in the audience, anything on the left-hand side would be the most favorable results. That's how the distribution is displayed. 83% of staff are familiar, are very familiar with the counseling program compared to uh, less than half of the parents, 47%. When parents were asked if they were aware of the advisory council at their school, uh, just over one third, 35% of parents indicated awareness of this council. On average, 67% uh, of students know who their counselor is. 
when you're looking at it by school cluster, you'll see that students at the middle school level are less likely to know who their counselor is. Elementary school uh, students are more likely to know their counselor either well or very well and perceive that their counselors know them very well or well compared to students at other grade levels, as indicated on this slide. This next slide indicates um, that um, student, nearly two-thirds of students um, have met with their counselor at least once. This shows the full distribution. And when you start to actually calculate um, the numbers of uh, times that students are interacting with their counselor, and you were to add the goldenrod, the blue, and the green um, together, you'll see that uh, elementary school students have met um, with their counselor at least once, 60% have indicated that they've met at least once. But you'll see there that elementary school students are most likely to have met with their counselor more than five times as indicated by the data on this slide. This slide highlights the interaction that parents and guardians are having with school counselors. And as you'll see, the majority of parents have either never spoken or met with their child's counselor, as indicated in the red portion of the stack bar graph. Uh, those same findings presented in the previous slide are further confirmed here, indicating that the majority of middle school parents have never met or um, spoken with their child's counselor, and it's most prevalent at the middle and intermediate school level. Sorry, it's just a little, there we go. These next three slides will highlight um, the perception that students, staff, and parents have about the interactions that they're having with school counselors. We frame that as just dispositions. As you can see here, um, from students' perspective, more than three in four, 76%, would agree or strongly agree that when they have a problem, there's a school counselor that they can go to for help. And look at those end counts. This is pretty representative, at least of, among the students who participated in the survey. You'll see this is over 4,000 responses to these respective items. Responses were less favorable in the area of my counselor helps me understand different pathways, career pathways, excuse me. This next slide um, displays the um, parents and guardians contact. Oh, that went the wrong direction, sorry. Parents and guardians, um, perceptions of school counselors' dispositions. And you'll see here that uh, these are slightly less favorable, and, uh, but do have a lot of don't know. So let's just um, keep this in some kind of context that a lot of parents are, uh, are at least reporting they're unable to report out on these respective uh, dispositions. However, the most favorable ratings were in the following two areas. My child's counselor is accessible to me when I have questions or need help, as well as my child's counselor treats me with respect. Those two particular items have the most favorable responses. And finally, this is staff's perceptions of school counselors' dispositions. You'll see here uh, that these were very favorable compared to parents and guardians. 80% of staff would agree that the school counselors are accessible to them when they have questions, as well as treat them with respect. Very similar to the parents' findings. These final two slides really highlight students' perceptions of lesson quality that is delivered by guidance counselor, or school counselor, excuse me. Some of the areas that we gave to students as examples were bullying, prevention, life skills, career exploration, mm -hmm. and the like. And you'll see here that elementary students were more likely to rate the overall quality of these lessons favorably compared to counterparts at other grade levels. Oh. 
students were asked if they could indicate where they think the school counseling program needs additional services. This question was also asked of parents and guardians. And you'll see here that students indicated that the school counseling program needs additional services in the, all three areas that are offered, academic support, career and college support, and social and emotional support. <coughs> this final slide really gives an overview of some of the key insights that uh, our team gleaned from reviewing these data. Overall, students had the most favorable views of the school counseling program and staff members were most familiar with the counseling program. While more than two-thirds of students know their counselor, less than half of parents and guardians do. In fact, the majority of parents have never met or spoken with their child's counselor. 63% of students have met with their counselor at least once. However, less than half of students, 42%, said that they know their counselor well, and even less, 37%, said that their counselor knows them well. When looking at the professional dispositions of guidance counselors, students and staff members held the most favorable views of their counselor's dispositions than did parents and guardians. Three takeaways that uh, the school board and members of the community may want to consider to improve the overall counseling program are in these three areas. Number one, exploring how to improve the overall quality of these respective services in those three strands. Uh, only because uh, staff members and parents and guardians were less favorable about these services and students indicated that additional support may be needed. Secondly, increasing outreach to middle and intermediate uh, school students and parents about who their counselor is and what the program is all about. And number three, improving the overall implementation and quality of, of lessons at both the, uh, at the middle and intermediate and high school levels. I'm happy to take any questions. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Well, we had an awful lot of comments Saturday. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> I think a couple of takeaways really just to reinforce it 6,000 people responded almost and about 300 of them were staff members and frequently people talk about surveys that we do that are dominated by an interested party well almost 5,000 4,500 I think of the responses were students and that's who we're here to support so Students were the number one respondent, parents second, and I think that's a really important takeaway is this truly represents the perceptions of the community we're trying to serve. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Williams? Um, I was going to remark on that as well. Um, having that kind of um, participation is great, so thank you to the staff who participated, um, the students and the parents, because we need that feedback in order to make uh, good decisions. I mean, thank you to K-12 Insight for doing this, because we've talked about counseling for a long time, and um, you're going to help us, I believe, get to um, make us the best we can be. So thank you very much for your work. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Spesky? Mr. Chair, I too just wanted to um, thank you for your staff for their work and mostly to the students, the staff, and parents in Manassas City for having taken their time to fill out these surveys. It's valuable insight. It um, reflects a lot of what we have heard over the years, and I think it's a great starting point. Um, as Mr. Albrecht said, we had many other comments on Saturday, some of which were highlighted this evening. So thank you again and, and really do want to thank I mean it's really important and I think in the time at least that I've been on the board we've not had a survey that's been had so much participation so that shows me that our students our parents and our staff also believe that this is an important area that um, we can continue to grow from with this data so thank you and thank you Manassas City for what you did thank you anyone else Mr. Bushnell uh, I'd, I'd just like to thank our staff because we got an initial report on, on counseling in June, and it's less than six months later, and it was in June that we asked to have this survey done and to, to look at a plan that was more student-centric and that looked at the needs of students and, and how they were being served. And uh, it, it is one of the quickest turnarounds with, one, with some of the most involvement that we've ever had in a survey. So. Uh, thank you, Ms. Stone and, and, and staff for all of the efforts that our staff has made in getting this done. 
thank you and uh, K-12 Insight for, for helping us uh, glean uh, meaning from the, from the data. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to, to both of these groups continuing to help point us in the right direction. But, but I would say that we are much further ahead than we were with the first report. And, and it's very refreshing to see a report that is centered on student needs and perceptions of those needs and how we can better deliver what students need in all three key areas. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Dr. Martinez. We appreciate it. And thank you to our staff. But you're not done yet. So, <laughs> Dr. Stone. So again, thank you to Dr. Martinez and K-12 Insight. They have been very helpful. And at this time, um, Ms. Lisa Warner is going to do an overview of our plan. Good evening. It's curveball. <laughs> Good evening. Um, so we started to develop our student services plan as soon as we received all of the information from K-12 Insight. We met as a K-12 counseling team and went over all this data. We then started a brainstorming activity so that we could um, create a shared understanding of what we wanted our students, um, what skill sets we wanted our students to have and characteristics we wanted them to have upon graduation from Osborne High School. So we brought all that information together. We broke up into three K-12 vertical teams. Um, all that information together and created um, our we clarified um, how we are going to support um, each and every student in Manassas City Public Schools and that's with our vision and mission this is tricky <laughs> um, our student services plan focuses on supporting students in three specific areas, three areas of development. We also call them domains, so we kind of go back and forth between areas of development and domains. And they're seen here. In the detailed plan that you received, we broke it down into these three uh, separate sections. And in each of these sections, we included the specific topics and the resources and the activities and the lessons that students are going to receive in academic support developmental area, in the college and career readiness area, as well as the social and emotional support area. Students will be receiving services in two ways from their professional school counselor. The first is um, direct services. Direct services can be defined as face-to-face -face opportunities that students have with their school counselor. Um, and that's going to be done um, on all those topics um, that are included in the plan. The first is going to be through classroom lessons. Each student is going to receive eight classroom lessons from a professional school counselor this year um, on all those topics that are in the plan, in the specific plan. Students are also going to be receiving direct services in small group counseling sessions. Students at the elementary level are identified for small group counseling um, through needs-based surveys, um, at least one, perhaps two, that are done per year. Students at the secondary level are identified for these small groups um, through stakeholder recommendations or referrals. Anyone who works with the student, that recommendation or referral can come from a parent, a teacher, an administrator, anyone who works with them. These small groups meet approximately eight times per year, about once a month. Um, Students are also going to receive direct services through individual counseling, and these individual counseling sessions can be on an array of topics. It can be about their grades, the report card, the interim, any academic support, solving any problems that they have inside of school, outside of school, um, or college and career preparation. In addition, each and every student is going to meet with their counselor twice this school year, once in the first semester and once in the second semester um, on a check-in basis. They will be meeting on a needs basis uh, more often as necessary. In addition to that, individual counseling, each and every student who is suspended outside of school for any reason will have a re-entry conference with their school counselor to develop a plan uh, for a successful return to school. Students are also going to be receiving um, indirect services, um, and it, that's an indirect service can be defined as anything that it supports the student that's not a face-to-face -face opportunity with the student. Um, they include referrals to all sorts of outside agencies and supports, as well as inside. Um, consultation and collaboration with anyone that can work with a student. Uh, school counselors are also going to be analyzing school data. They're going to be meeting with sub-schools at the secondary level. They're going to be meeting with teachers, administrators um, at the elementary level 
schools. Um, school counselors are also serving on district and school committees, um, which will uh, support students. And the last is uh, school-wide activities. In every building, we offer um, activities for families and students um, that will support them. Okay. So we've done a lot of work, but we still have some things left to do. And the first piece is next steps in terms of some tasks that we will be working on. Um, we will continue our partnership with K-12 Insight for a couple of things. The first is program evaluation. As you receive program evaluation for all of our instructional things, we will do the same for school counseling. And our survey serves as kind of that baseline data of where we were. Um, we will be partnering with K-12 to continue to provide that survey again to parents, students, and staff to see where we are towards the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Also for the implementation of post-services student satisfaction surveys, we're really interested in how students are viewing the services that they're receiving. Um, still working a little bit on the implementation of that, but hope to have that ready to go by second semester. Two of the things we need to be working on as far as addressing survey data findings are the communication to our stakeholders so that they are aware of who their counselors are and what services their counselors offer and how to access those if needed. Um, and also the implementation of our lessons. As you see in your plan, eight lessons will be provided to every student this year. That is new for all of the levels. Um, so working on how those are implemented how students are receiving them when they are implemented, um, and that will involve all of our K-12 counselors as well in putting those two plans together. Focus areas are some places where we need to make some future decisions. Um, now that we have a plan in place and everybody's working with the data that we have, uh, we need to make sure that we review and revise our school counselor evaluation tool to ensure that it's in line with what we're measuring, um, and review and revise the school counselor job description to ensure there are things on there that they are doing and take off things that are no longer um, needed for their job description. And there's been a lot of focus both in the community, at the board level, with our staff, um, even <coughs> our committees like Safe Schools Advisory Council, about the elementary school counselor student ratio. Um, as we know, there's typically one counselor. They serve about 700 students. And you can see through positive um, survey results, they're doing an excellent job. But again, that's difficult to meet the needs of 700 students. So two ways we will be looking at that. Um, as we enter the budget process, we do um, a zero-based budgeting process so we can look at our allocation of resources and determine where everyone needs to be to best meet the needs of our students. Um, also adding staff if, if we feel that's necessary to bring that forward to you. So we will look at that again through the budget process and also for a more immediate um, assistance at the elementary level. We're partnering with the George Mason University School Counseling Program. They're very excited about bringing interns to our division to work with our elementary school counselors and to provide additional student um, services as well as some special projects that they may be able to help us with such as data collection um, on the many things that we are doing this year. So that is our presentation for you this evening. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Ms. Purdy? I, I actually don't have any questions because you guys did a really good job on Saturday. Um, I just have a couple of comments. Um, for those in the audience who are watching on television, it might have been glossed over really quickly, but one of the things that I thought was particularly impressive about the work that these folks did when they talked about their vertical teams, they actually were very deliberate about having the different levels so that you really had the counselors running from elementary school to, to high school because they were really focused on, on trying to, to work that transition piece. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big deal and I think that's going to go a long way toward uh, serving the, the students. So I did want to point that out. And I have to say, you all did a really masterful job presenting this information tonight. It was so smooth, so clear, just, I mean, you really, really, you know, you can tell you guys are very, very familiar with, with this plan and, and you know it inside out. So I just, I just wanted to point that out. And then finally, I, I, I am really intrigued by the fact that you're partnering with, with GWU in the internship. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, tell you a, a little bit of a personal story. My sister is a, a professor at the university, and, and, and she runs a program where she's doing the same thing. And she has found that it's, it does tremendous um, impact on both sides, not only in terms of the, the students that are participating, 
um, but also the interns. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out because I think that has a lot of potential. So thank you for, for being innovative and reaching out. I think that's good. Thank you, Mrs. Bernie. Mr. Williams? Thank you. Um, thank you to the staff for devising the plan and crafting the plan based on the feedback you received. And I look forward to hopefully us, at least me, but us as the board, doing the best we can to help support you all in this goal. Um, two anecdotes I want to mention really quickly. I was at a meeting about three weeks ago with the dean of the University of Virginia, and it was a parents' meeting, and a parent asked her what the biggest problem was among students she saw in the last couple of years. And I expected having two kids who've gone through there, heard something about drinking or college safety, but she said the biggest problem she sees now is our emotional issues. She mentioned eating disorder, she mentioned depression, and she said oftentimes they get first years at UVA who come in with those issues, and they're not endemic to UVA. And that just shows that there's issues that these kids have that come with them. Um, and then another anecdotal note is um, I work for my wife's pediatric office. And in the last few years, we've seen a drastic increase in the need to refer kids to um, psychiatrists and mental health issues. And there aren't the professionals out there in the area to, to fill the need. So oftentimes, I'm not here from her, um, the backstop is school counselors. So thank you all who are here for the work that you do because your job has changed drastically in the last few years. Uh, we greatly appreciate it and we um, wish you well in doing your work, but thank you for the work you do because it's changed a lot and then we realize there's different pressures on you now than there were, let's say, even five years ago. <coughs> so thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Robert? Um, thank you, sir. I mean, at the risk of sounding like I'm drinking our own bathwater, let me commend the superintendent and the staff um, for the real soul searching. This wasn't easy, and something this board, this superintendent has consistent, superintendent have consistently focused on are data-driven decisions. And here we have a lot of data that, in some cases, validated perceptions that were long held. In other cases, went against those perceptions, but it was data. And change is not going to be easy, but I look forward to how we're going to improve the delivery of these services, to student services, how they're going to improve the academic experience for students, and ultimately, I think they're going to contribute to the increased success for all of our students. So, thank you to everybody involved, and I think we all look forward to working together to, to get better. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Stone, Ms. Warner. You guys did a wonderful job presenting. Uh, Mrs. Purdy is right, and uh, we appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to discussion of the CIP. Is everybody going to sneak out now? You're not going to sneak very well now, are you? Well, well actually, they're at the safety in numbers. They're not very stealthy. Is stealthy a word? Yes. Is it? It is now. It is, it is, it is and Mrs. Purdy's a line of business. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins. Good evening. As, as you are aware, we had a, did have a school board meeting on Saturday, and the uh, revised CIP is on the screen now. Uh, during the school board meeting, there was a consensus of the board to remove $155,000 that we had allocated for covered walkways um, for, for Mayfield, Hayden, Round, and Weems. Um, and the board also asked that we move forward in the CIP plan for us to have secured vestibules placed in all of our schools on the, on the CIP plan. So when, when the final outcome comes, there's no, there's no changes made from the uh, draft document to the one that you have tonight to the revised plan for FY17 through FY20. All of the changes were made and uh, fiscal year uh, 2021. Well, um, these changes resulted in $1.1 million of additional upgrades in FY21 in the revised plan. It moved change from $2,010,000 to $3,121,000. Uh, are there any questions, concerns, comments? No. But we didn't add money to the budget. We moved forward projects for which were in the out years. I just want to make sure that that's that absolutely correct. I mean, we you we, referred to a million dollars more being spent, but it's actually 
they are dollars that were scheduled to be spent later. We ask them to be moved forward and done sooner in the plan. Yes, sir. That's absolutely correct. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Hey. Mr. Albert. Our CIP is a lot of money, and I don't want members of the community to think that we're just rolling through this. We have spent over the last several years a lot of time in community engagement and talking with what we have to do. Um, we have several problems we're trying to rectify within a very constrained fiscal environment. Um, Mr. Bushnell, I think, has seen a lot of board members come and go and a lot of city council members come and go, and they've all said the city's built out, and we'll probably be at 8,000 students before he finishes his, you know, 28th year or whatever it'll be, Art. Mm -hmm. I'm going um, for 30. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to build to meet that demand. At the same time, the way we work as a society and the way we learn has changed significantly in the last 20, 30, 40 years. And anybody who has ever been in a building that was built in the 60s or 70s with many of the grand experiments that were going on back then, um, you know we got to go in there and fix that stuff. And lastly, it's an aging infrastructure. So if we, even if it was built right, just like our house, you got to go in and fix the tile in the bathrooms every so often and just do the stuff because they get used and they get used a lot. So we're trying to pull all of that together in the most effective way that meets the needs of the entire community, recognizing that we have more and more students, they have more and more needs, um, and people learn different. So I really do appreciate the community engagement we've had, and this board has had a significant amount of discussions, and the fact that we're dealing with taking out thirty and forty thousand dollar covered walkways because they don't make sense as we look in a fiscal environment tells you the level of detail I think this board with staff got into. Thank you, sir. Anyone else, Mr. Bushnell? One of the biggest differences in this CIP, and it, it's different than any other CIP that we've done previously. Uh, at the beginning of the CIP process, we asked staff, what are the best practices? What are the best practices in this industry, in the educational industry, for uh, budgeting dollars? How many dollars are needed? And it turns out that the dollars that are needed are a factor of the total cost of the replacement of all of the, the buildings and facilities we have. Uh, it, it was an eye-opener for me because it meant that we had been under budgeting uh, the amount that was needed to maintain our facilities. Uh, so there are more dollars allocated, but they are dollars that are allocated according to best practices, according to uh, the, the amount that we should be putting into our facilities to enable them to last longer and be used as educational facilities longer. At the same time, Mr. Albrecht said, we do have an aging infrastructure. We, the city, the nation, the state, we have aging infrastructure that, that has been ignored and that too often in the past, uh, we as a school system and, and other government entities uh, strapped for funds. We, we didn't put the money into uh, maintenance and to the ongoing uh, caretaking of our facilities. So we now have, I think, three prongs of, of a plan. And thank you, Mr. Helton, for uh, being the person who is making all of this happen and making it happen the right way. But we now have budgeted dollars for maintenance. We have budgeted dollars for uh, ongoing facility uh, upkeep and upgrades. And then we are also looking both short-term and long-term at when we will need to uh, have uh, additions or remodeling or replacements for the parts of our aging infrastructure. You know, we're, we're dealing with Baldwin now. We know that a few years from now we'll need to make decisions on Dean. But we still have older buildings, and we need to do what we can to make sure that they stay in the best shape to be able to provide the best education to the children who go to all of those buildings every day. Uh, so this represents, it's, it's another step in the evolution of the CIP. It's another step in the evolution of how we care for and maintain and uh, take care of our existing buildings and plan for future. 
So it's a, it's a very different document than we've seen in the past, but I think it's based on best practices and on the needs of our system. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we can move on to school board policy. Mrs. Spetsky, are you running this? Uh, you are now. <coughs> you are. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, the policy committee met at 5 o'clock at Central Office on November the 10th to review the latest Virginia School Board Association policy updates. They re review policies two to three times a year and then send out those updates to the school boards. And so that's what we met about. Um, the policies sent out to the whole board are the five that you saw in front of you. Um, the BDD, electronic participation and meeting from a remote location. The biggest change in that one was based on legislation where the governor must declare a state of emergency in order to use um, a, a meeting that is done remotely. The GEA-JOH and JOH-GEA, they're the exact same policy, but they fall under two different categories. They cross-reference each other very closely. That's why you have it there twice. Um, this is was put together um, by our technology department in preparation as we work towards um, doing electronic signatures with our records. Um, then policy gh um, which is our health policy. Um, the committee agreed that um, they would prefer to not use VSBA's GBE policy, but to use GH and just add in from the GBE policy a, a statement regarding um, volunteers. Um, and then the last one, the IL testing programs, that's a new one that has come from VSBA, referencing the fact that all students are tested annually. So um, I, these were sent out to the board. I have not heard any feedback from anybody. Um, these are the ones that are that just, root, this is just routine type of maintenance stuff that your policy committee does two to three times a year as legislation is approved and then implemented. Um, we review these things. So I, um, if I hear um, nothing further, I'd recommend that these policies go forward at our next meeting on the consent agenda for approval. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions or comments? Uh, I will thank the committee. This has been a, I mean, this is just general stuff, but everything else this committee has done over the last two years has been uh, a uh, large task, and we appreciate it very much. Okay. Action Agenda, Student Achievement and Accountability, Osborne High School's new course proposal for 2016-17. Ms. Benner? Mrs. Benner? You confused me. You walked up and I didn't know. Yeah. Are you trying to get on camera? <laughs> His name's on the presentation. Okay. Well, it still serves. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, fellow members of the board. Uh, this evening, Ms. Benner and I are here to propose a new course request for, uh, for next year's school year. Um, but first, I'd like to take a moment and uh, share with uh, the board and our viewers at home the larger picture that this course plays a role in. Uh, and right now, the career cluster that this new course will be a part of is the STEM Academy. Within that STEM Academy cluster, there are three pathways mm -hmm. I wanted to focus on tonight to share the, the larger picture. <coughs> Last year, uh, we had a course called Introduction to Engineering that was new and, and approved and put into place for this school year. And that opened up the pathway for engineering technology. Every one of these pathways uh, basically has three types of courses, a foundation course, a specialty course, and a capstone course. I broke out Introduction to Engineering uh, because that is the foundation course for an engineering technology pathway but to also demonstrate how flexible our CT, plan, our CT pathways can be for students. If a student chose the engineering technology pathway and at the end of taking that first foundation course, Introduction to Engineering, decided it wasn't for, wasn't for her or him, that student could consider other pathways and still apply that, that content, that knowledge that they learned because it's still principles that apply to other pathways. And so I wanted to pull that out and just demonstrate how flexible this can be for students as they're self-awareness grows and as their awareness of, of the global marketplace goes also. So we're here this evening <coughs> um, to request the, the 
the, sub, uh, the sub, subsequent course for that, which is the principles of technology, and, and Ms. Benner will speak to that in a moment. We're also working to uh, finalize our CTE plan, uh, which will be coming up here uh, later uh, next week. As that plan is finalized, we'll probably come back to the board with some other new course requests and, and other changes that may be a, a product and outcome of that uh, decision making. So with no further ado, I'd like to uh, have Ms. Benner come up and speak to you about the new course proposal. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, everyone. I think that um, Mr. Lyons called it principles of technology, but it's actually oh. principles of engineering. Yes, we did that earlier. Yes, <laughs> principles of engineering is actually the second step in the engineering pathway in Project Lead the Way, and just as Mr. Lyons said. And it will be a full year course. Um, it will be, it can be considered a sequential elective if they've taken intro to engineering. It will be offered grades 10 through 12. Um, it is a course that is often developed, or is often taken concurrently with college level math or college level science or at least advanced level courses um, for kids that are considering um, careers in, in engineering. And from Project Lead the Way, I love this, it says students will have an opportunity to investigate engineering in high tech careers. And they will do this through three ways, through activity, through projects and through problem-based learning. Um, and that is really sort of the fundamental approach of all Project Lead the Way classes. The course of study will include mechanisms, energy sources, energy applications, machine control, fluid power, statics, material properties, material testing, and statistics. A lot of things that sound really, really difficult to me. Um, but that is the course, and we're really excited about, uh, very excited about this, and thank you for doing it, Mr. Lyon, because I think it does lay out what our hopes are for the STEM Academy. And you can see that the second, the second principle of engineering is one of our primary foundation courses. Questions? Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Oh, Ms. Purdy? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, one of the things that I think is worth pointing out is the comment that came from Mr. Lyons earlier, that um, even though a child may not decide engineering is for them, that the content of that course and the fact that the program that's laid out allows them to to uh, pursue other paths is, is really good. Um, you made the, the comment about, you know, the stuff that was in the course. Um, Every single one of those items is exactly what you need if you're going to be a homeowner or a car owner. So there's just nothing about that course that a, a child that, or a student in high school that takes that class is not going to walk away from not finding something that they will be uh, using in the rest of their life. So I, I, I think this is a good thing to be pursued. Thank you. Mr. Albright? Uh, Mr. Brandon, we start making a motion, and I would move that the school board of the city of Manassas mm -hmm. approve the new course proposal of principles of engineering at Osborne High School. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Sebesky. Is there any other discussion? Just one thing, sir. I mean, I think everyone has heard me say it before. I don't personally believe every student needs a four-year college education. I do believe everyone needs to embrace lifelong learning and continued professional development. And I'm really glad to see this edition and looking forward to continue to expand, refine, enrich, I don't know what the right words are, our CTE program so that we can graduate students from Osborne that meet the demands of the 21st century workplace, the employers, and the jobs. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Uh, sir, just one. I think that it's important to stress the fact that Mr. Lyon mentioned that this is a this is part of an overall plan. It's, it's, it's not an isolated course. It fits into a complete re-examination of course offerings at the high school, of what we do in CTE, uh, and of what we do as a, as a district. And, and I think that is of paramount importance. I think it also means that, that there may be other changes this year, next year. There may be other new courses that, that the high school and, and the administration uh, want to add as part of that overall development and and uh, we certainly encourage them to continue that that, that this this is not an isolated course offering uh, proposal it is part of an overall plan and, and we look forward to hearing more and seeing more of that 
Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Um, I just want to make sure that we know that this may not necessarily be the last time course changes come before us at Osborne, uh, that right. we are just doing this in increments when they become ready. Is that correct? That's correct. So they may, they may not. May or may not. May or may not. Okay. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Sebesky, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the new course proposal of principles of engineering at Osborne High School. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry 7-0. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Thank you, uh, Ms. Benner. Um, Mr. Albrecht, you have a motion? Yeah, have a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Sebesky. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Anybody would like to talk?